So here's the story. The customer goes to Best Buy, requests a gaming computer, and this is what they get. A lot of times when people go to these stores, they get caught up with the whole RGB, the whole glass type mirror finish, and this is no exception. I mean, the whole front of this computer is just a mirror finish, glass. And I gotta say, I mean, it has tons and tons and tons of airflow. I mean, just look at this little hole right here. I mean, yeah, that's just the only airflow you get. But it has the glass. It's got a GTX 1650, great. Has a i3-10105, I think it's a 10105F if I'm not mistaken. That's great, but well, don't get me wrong, those i3 temp gens are, you know, they're, they're okay, they, they hold up. Now the other thing that I see is always a common issue is that it has single channel of eight gigs of memory, which I just don't get it. I'd rather have four, two, four gigs and have eight gigs and just one single. The memory is XPG, Gamix D10, Gamix Direct X10, I don't know. But it's DDR4 3200 and yeah, CL162020. Oof. But despite these specs, at least it has the whole M.2 thing, right? Well, then again, that's the new standard. It has the Western Digital Blue SN570. So it's a 500 gigabyte version. Probably the PCI Gen 3. Maybe not. Who knows? Now for the back, the cable man management is to be as expected. I mean, I guess they did the best they can with what they got. You got the little hub over here for all their specialty fans. And we got our power supply. So let's see what kind of power supply comes on this thing. So for the power supply, let's see what it has. Channel Well Technology, switching power supply, CWT. I've never heard of this brand. It's got the whole 80 plus gold thing, so that might be good. Feels really, like really light and cheap. And this thing has like tons and tons, and I mean tons of Molex. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is like four Molex. That's um, awesome. So you might be saying, why do I have this? And what is the point of looking at this computer? Well, number one, it cost $800 two years ago, which I guess during the GPU apocalypse, the 1650 had some value, not so much now, but good friend of the family belongs to his kids. And apparently they went to shut it down. Something didn't shut down properly. And I'll post a picture of the uh, error that we got, but it has some type of weird error. Talking about the BIOS had to be reset. And after that, they went to turn it back on and this thing does not boot up. Apparently the RGB doesn't kick on or anything, so not sure. We might have a fried component, but we're going to try to diagnose it, trouble it, shoot it, and see if we can get this thing going. And if not, hopefully we'll see how well the uh, iBuy Power Best Buy warranty really works. So let's get to it. So now first things first, let's go ahead and verify the customer's complaint. And anytime you're working on a computer, do that first. See if we could replicate the problem and get an idea of what it's doing. So let's go ahead. We've plugged in all our stuff over here. Let's push the power button. Okay, we got power. We got some RGB action going on. Now, do we get a signal? All right, the fans are spinning down and spinning up. Sometimes I see that with a boot loop. Hmm. Let's double check my connector. All right, so we got no video. So where do we start next? So not sure what happened. So it booted up and it seemed like it was kind of stuck in a boot loop. And the only thing I could think of is that maybe it was just kind of relearning settings and I'll go into the BIOS and check that. But I went to plug it into the motherboard and then I realized the Intel i3 1010-5100-2400-F does not have integrated graphics. So then I plugged it back into the video card and now everything seems to be working just fine. So not sure what happened there. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just run some stress tests, AIDA 64, Heaven Benchmark, stress the mess out of this computer see if I could get it to act up. If not, then we'll clean it up, send it back to the customer, and let's do some stress. All right, this thing's been running for 32 minutes, and it's solid. 
GPU temperature is 71 C's, which is eh, considering it's open. CPU 63 degrees. I mean, it, it is what it is on that. You know, you got to remember that you're hired to fix a problem, and sometimes that's all you can do. So, as far as what happened, I don't know, but I have some thoughts on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a good cleaning, so probably some fresh thermal paste, and wrap it up, and then I'll give you my thoughts. That was dusty, but to be expected. But I mean, this case just, I don't know how it gets that dusty, cause it's just, well, it does have the vents on the side. So I guess I could see that, but that's just weird. Just the vent right over there. I don't know, never seen a case like that. I buy power for you. So what happened? Honestly, looking back at the footage and thinking about it, when I was showing this computer and its specs and all its glory, quote unquote, I took off the memory and I've seen this happen where the memory just tends to get unseated and just causes a lot of different issues, boot loops, crashing, just won't boot and stuff like that. And a lot of times fixes like that is as simple as just plugging back in the memory. My number one rule when I'm working on computers, which I broke today, is that I plug it in as is, I don't mess with it, I don't take it apart, but I just kind of did it to kind of showcase this. And usually by messing with the computer the way it is as I got it that kind of helps me to rule out what was wrong with it in this case considering the only thing I did technically change was that I mean yeah I did kind of take out the power supply but rule of thumb plug it in see what it does and then tinker with it because you don't want to accidentally fix the problem because then you'll never know what's wrong with it and if the problem comes back you don't know where to begin so just my two cents on that and after getting it running, checked all the hardware, software, all that stuff, make sure that the BIOS are up to date, all drivers are up to date, and that's just good preventative maintenance, just keep them from having other future problems. As when you fix these computers, you want to give them some type of guarantee that you're not going to have an issue. So just definitely something to consider that if you go the extra mile for the customers, they will be loyal, they will come back, and they will also take good care of you. And I try to do that to my customers. And by doing a stress test, that will kind of make sure that there is no other underlying issue going on. If the memory, CPU, graphics card, or even the power supply, because if we put too much load on it if any of those were failing those stress tests would help us to identify what the problem is so kind of got to be thorough with these things so fortunately and unfortunately there was nothing seriously major wrong with this and sometimes that happens sometimes you get some cool glitches and cool hardware failures but i think it was just an issue of the memory just coming loose being unseated as this computer has been moved numerous times so that tends to happen guys check your memory and reseed them sometimes it's as simple as that so hope you enjoyed this video Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.